G'day you 12, welcome back to the channel where today we are looking at some revision questions for our stats chapter before we move on to anything else would be a nice change. So I've got for you 10 questions, uh, nine of them are multiple choice questions, they should be pretty quick. Uh, these are all from standard mathematics papers or general mathematics papers because this is new content for our course. So there's going to be no past HSC questions from advanced papers if you follow me. So as with all these questions, I recommend when you see a new question pop up, you should pause the video and figure out if you think it's A, B, C or D, and then unpause the video and hear my explanation and see if my answer matches with yours. All right, here we go. Here's the first one from 2016 General Maths HSE. Uh, which of the following sets of data is classified as categorical and nominal? All right, so hopefully you pause the video and hopefully you notice that C and D are numerical data, so that rules them out. A and B are categorical. Uh, we, would, we would call this set in B, we'd call this uh, ordinal data, sorry, because we can order it from smallest to largest. However, in question A, there is no clear order. There is NO order. It's called nominal. So the answer is A. All right, for the next one, we have a soccer referee wrote down the number of goals scored in nine different games. Uh, the last number has been omitted. The range of the data is 10. What is the five number summary? So we need the lowest score, highest score, lower quartile, upper quartile, and median. Okay, hopefully you've paused. So if the range is 10, that must mean that the distance from two to this number here is 10, which means this must be 12, okay? So it's gotta be A or C, because they end in 12. They both have a median of five, which is correct. And they both have a lower quartile of three, which is between uh, these two here, because we've got the median here, and then we've got two halves of four. Okay, so lower quartile is three. Uh, upper quartile is gonna be the median of these two scores here. Okay, so halfway between eight and nine is 8.5, which is why A is your correct answer, okay? You get the high score of 12 from the range and you get the median in the upper quartile. Pretty straightforward. All right, next one, again from 2016 General Maths, we have a box and whisker plot. We have two box and whisker plots for a history test and a geography test. In history, 112 students sat the test and the number of students who scored above 30 was the same for both tests. How many students sat geography? All right, there's your chance to pause. All right, so if there's 112 students in this data set here, now remember a box plot splits it into quartiles a quarter of 112 is 28. So we've got 28 here, 28 here, 28 here, and 28 here. Now the question says the number of students who scored above 30 was the same for both. So in history, a quarter scored above 30, whereas in geography, it's the median is on 30, which means half scored above 30. Okay, so if this number of students is the same as this, and like I said, this is a quarter of 112, this is 28, which means that half of geography is 28. So all of geography would be two lots of 28, which is 56, option C. Coolio, next one we have uh, from the 2007 HSC paper. We've got a cumulative frequency histogram with the OGIVE, AKA polygon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Sanath, what? Sanath? knows that his examination mark is in the fourth decile, which of the following could have been one of his marks? All right, so we have a set of 50 scores. That's the top of the cumulative frequency. So if we have deciles, they're gonna be sets of, um, well, it's like a 10th, yeah? So a 10th of 50 is gonna be five. So you've got first decile here, second decile here, third here, and the fourth decile is from here to here. So if Sanat got his mark in the fourth decile. He's somewhere in the range of 55. Okay, so the only one that makes sense is option B, which is 57. Okay, sweet. For the next one, we have the 2013 paper. I couldn't fit the question on, but it's basically here are four um, histograms. 
which one of them isn't super dodgy basically. So three of them are dodgy, which one is not dodgy? Pause the video, have a think. Okay, so options A and C are a bit dodgy because like we said in our last video, the y-axis has been truncated is the fancy word. So it starts at 46 and not at zero. So this relatively small difference looks very large. Uh, option B has not been truncated, but the width is not consistent. So brand Y looks much larger, even though it's only a little bit taller. Okay, so that's very dodgy. So the only non-dodgy one is option D. We've got a fair Y axis. We have a fair width. So D is your good survey. The rest are super dodge. Okay, next one we have, okay, this one was in the 2019 standard maths paper and it's been put into the 2020 uh, NESA sam sample exam that they published a few weeks ago, okay? So this is basically saying, expect questions like this in your uh, HSC exam for this year and every year afterwards. Disgustingly, it is a Prudhoe chart, which you do know I am allergic to, but we're gonna work through it. We have uh, school collecting data on reasons why a student were arriving late. Okay, so here's our number one cause, looks like slept in, that makes sense. What percentage of students gave the reason truss, sorry, not truss, train or bus delay? There's your four options. See if you can figure it out. All right, so yes, you could uh, read off the number of arrivals and figure out how many trains there are and then add them all up and find the total and find the percentage, but that will take you quite a lot of time. If you're smart, you will use the uh, the Pareto line right here, okay? And remember, Pareto lines measure cumulative frequency percentage, uh, if I'm saying that right. So what we're saying is that up to appointments was 80, what's that, like 86% of reasons. And then if you include train or bus delay, you now have 92% of the reasons, okay? So if we had 86% over here and we had 92% over here, what we're adding on is the train or bus delay, which must be the 6%. So well done if you said A for 6%, the difference between this dot and this dot based on this axis. Okay, so yeah, uh, Pareto charts are a bit tricky because there's so much information. It's just a bombard of numbers and lines and dots. It's just too much for me. All right, question seven. We have uh, the mean of a set of scores is, of 10 scores, sorry, is 14. Another two scores are included and the new mean is now 16. What is the mean of the two additional scores? Okay. So if you're doing this question in a straightforward approach using a bit of algebra, it is pretty tricky because you have to do something like this, all right? We have the 10 previous scores, which all have an average of 14, yeah? That's their mean. We've got the 10 previous scores plus the two new ones. We're taking the average of that, just got an email. We're just taking the average of that, which means taking these 12 scores summed together, dividing by 12, and we get a mean of 16, okay? So we can sort of simplify this equation a bit. We can add these 14s together. We can multiply this 12 across, and it looks like this. Okay, 10 times 14 is 140. 12 times 16 is 192. We can take the 140 off both sides, and we can get that x plus y is 52 which means that the average of x plus y is going to be x plus y on 2, which must be 26, which is your answer, okay? Which I get, look, this is pretty, I would say this is a very tricky algebraic approach for a standard maths exam. I would expect a lot of standard maths students to not be able to do this realistically. I guess you could have kind of done this one just by looking at the answers, because if you're adding two new scores and your average is going from 14 to 16, you must be adding some pretty big numbers, yeah? Four would reduce your, your mean. 16 wouldn't, uh, wouldn't rise it enough. 18 could rise it enough, but if you can sort of think about it, it's not going to actually. 26 is gonna work, okay? So probably the easiest way to do this question is use your answers and work backwards. You could do 14 plus 14 plus blah, 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 blah. See if 18 plus 18 works and it won't. Do this again with X and Y being uh, 26 and you will get the correct answer of 16. Okay, so keep in mind for tricky multiple choice questions, you do have the answer in here somewhere, you can work backwards if it is easier. Okay, question eight. We have a grouped data frequency table shown below. What is the mean? 
Okay. So the only trick for this question is that you need to know that for a grouped frequency table, you need to find the class centers to use for your calculations, okay? So if we're adding up all our scores, we're gonna treat these one to fives as just threes because that's the midpoint of one and five. Okay, so this is a three, this is an eight, uh, 13, 18, so on and so forth, okay? So three times three uh, plus eight times six plus 13 times eight plus 18 times nine, divide that by whatever these plus together to give and you get 12.4. Okay, so very simple trick, but some people do not know how to handle class intervals. You've got to find the center and use your class center. Okay. All right, last multiple choice question. We have data arranged from smallest to largest. So X must be either 11, 12 or somewhere between 11 and 13. The range is six less than twice the value of X. Which of the following is true? All right, so if the range is six less than twice the value of X. So the range is 20, yeah, that's pretty obvious. So 20 is six less than two X, which means that two X must be 26, which means that X must be 13. Okay, so Interpreting this, you can figure out that the value of x is 13, which means that the median, x is in the middle because you've got three here, three here, one in the middle. So our median is 13, so it's it's, uh, it's C or D. Now the interquartile range, well again, these are our bottom and lower half, sorry, upper and lower half. The lower quartile is six and the upper quartile is 18. So the interquartile range is 12, so it must be option D. Well done if you got that as well. And the last one is not multiple choice, but it is pretty quick. We have the 2010 General Maths HSC paper. We have two box and whisker plots on the same axis. Here is our question. So this is distribution of ages of children in number town in 2010 and 2000, okay? In 2000, there were 1750 children aged 0 to 18. Okay, so in 20, sorry, in 2000, the whole data set is 1750 children. Uh, how many children were aged 12 to 18 in the years 2000? All right, so a nice, quick and easy one because 12 to 18 is from the median to the top. So we've just got to do half of the whole data set, which they said is 1750. Divide that by two and you get 875. Okay, so we've got 875 up here, 875 down here. Part two, the number of children aged 12 to 18 years is the same in both 2000 and 2010. Okay, so from 12 to 18, which is half of this data set, is the same as 12 to 18, which is a quarter of this data set. So this is kind of like the question we did before. How many children are aged zero to 18 years in 2010? Okay, so in part I, we said, well, from here to here is 875. Question says that that's the same number as this. So this is 875. So the whole data set is the four quarters. So 875 times four, which gives us 3,500. All right, and now for the last bit, we just need to identify two changes in the distribution from 2000 to 2010. Okay, so you gotta make two valid points for two marks and you should back them up with some location, sorry, measures of location or spread or the shape. Okay, so I want you to think, what are two things you could say about this distribution to give you two marks? So first thing you could say is that there's been a sort of trend downwards, I suppose, because in 2000, we were definitely skewed uh, positively towards um, older ages, whereas in 2010, we're a bit more lower heavy, so we're a bit negatively skewed, okay? So, so if you said you've gone from positively skewed to negatively skewed, there's a mark. Um, you could say that the median age has dropped by um, six years. That's a valid point. I could give you a mark. You could say that the lower quartile in 2000 covered eight years and now in 2010 it only covers two years. So there's been a dramatic change in the lower quartile that could give you a mark. You could even say that the interquartile range has shrunk a little bit. We had an interquartile, oh sorry, expanded a little bit, pardon me. We've gone from uh, an eight year interquartile range 
to a 10-year interquartile range. So a little bit of change there. But the main thing they're wanting you to comment on is the, is the shift in uh, from higher ages or sorry, older ages to younger ages and backing that up with some knowledge of uh, median or quartiles or skew, okay? So you got to make a you got to make an observation and you got to back it up with some content knowledge, okay? So if you just answer for this question, oh the ages got lower, you probably wouldn't be getting a mark for that because you haven't sort of made any any valid um, justifications, I suppose. All right, that's enough rambling. That is all our vision done. So moving on to your homework. Your only homework for today's lesson is to have a relaxing holiday. You guys have earned it. It's been a very stressful uh, fortnight as we've been sort of adjusting to learning from YouTube. So I appreciate all your hard work and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much for watching.